Hello everybody, it's me Sam here from Wookie Gaming and today I'm going to be showing you how to use and install the Spigot server. For those of you who don't know what the Spigot is, basically it's the same as your craftprojects.jar which you may use already on your server. However, it has a lot of modifications and tweaks to it which make uh, basically reduce the workload your server has to do. So it will reduce the lag for your players and will be just a lot faster. So it has a few modifications like that. Um, some are moved on to actual Craftplug itself, so Craftplug itself will have these uh, performance updates. However, some never make it to the Craftplug. So obviously, there are some, there may be some issues. So use it at your own discretion. Uh, disclaimer: If it, it goes bad, it's not my fault. Basically, so you can use it, but most of the top servers do use it to reduce lag if you've got a lot of players on then it might be an idea to switch to spigot and even if you've got just a small um, it will save a lot of CPU and uh, when there's no players online for instance uh, basically it will save on the RAM and all CPU usage but anyway uh, I'm just going to go over how to use and install it so I'm going to leave you a link in the description here's the uh, spigot uh, homepage and their website. You just want to go to download. Obviously, you can read here about all the latest changes and stuff. Uh, I want to hit the top one here, and you can either choose the Spigot 1.6.2 snapshot or Spigot the jar. Obviously, choose whatever one you like, and then just download it. I've already downloaded it already, and just drag and drop this into your directory. Now, if you want to speed things up. Oops. You can basically just rename this by uh, craft bucket, or you can just go into your uh, already craft bucket server, drag and drop your spigot jar in, and then just rename it, and, and it will work perfectly. Um, but if you're just starting from scratch, you want to drag and drop the jar in there, and then if we just nick the start back I used earlier. Um, and then put the start back in, or if you're using just the, basically the same start script you use with Craftplugit. Here's mine, um, I use all the time. Obviously, make sure it says spigot here.jar. Uh, if it says Craftplugit, obviously it won't work. It just has to match this jar name here. And then you've got the, uh, the maximum amount of uh, RAM you want to use there. So mine's up 2 gigabytes. Anyway, so I'm going to start this over up just to, just to see. So it should all load up very similar to Craft Bucket. It will load the worlds up and whatnot. It's just doing all the spawn areas because it's loading the world. If we see up here, uh, it says starting the Minecraft server 1.6.2, and it should all be fine. Uh, it's just loading the worlds here. Obviously, once it's loaded, it will be fine, and it should also. If we, well, it's all done now. Let's just stop it and start it again just to make sure it all works. We have no errors. So there we go. It loads all that. It shows you information about all the worlds here and all the settings in your configs and stuff, the ports and whatnot. And uh, there you go. It's all done. 2.678 seconds to load up and whatnot. So if we have to look at the directory stuff now, you'll see it looks effectively the same as your craft bucket thing. You've still got your bucket.yml, uh, information.yml, or not. And you can still use your uh, plugins you use for bucket in here. Uh, it has the same API. So you can just still look on dev.bucket.org to find all your plugins and you can add them here. Uh, the only difference is it will have a spigot.yml. So, what I'm going to do is just quickly go over this ML just to go over this configuration. Okay, so to start off with, we have the config version. You shouldn't be able to, well, you shouldn't change this technically. It just shows you the version of this. Uh, you shouldn't have to change that. Uh, commands, tab complete. So, if you want to complete commands uh, on the server, for instance, or complete players' names and stuff, you just hit tab and it will fill out the rest of the name. Uh, you can turn that on to false. Obviously, if you just do slash and then you can press tab, then you can see every single plugin. So it could pose a security risk. So 
be wary about that. The log, you can say that's a true or false, and that will just log uh, if the players put a command in, it will say player issued and then the command, so you can stop that logging on the console. And then spam exclusions, so this will just exclude commands from a vina spam check. Uh, this shouldn't be necessary. Okay, uh, settings. So we have a log filters here. Um, you shouldn't have to change that, just just keep that is. Uh, basically, this is for uh, another thing called bungee cord, which I should be able to go over in a, uh, another video, but I'll, I'll just explain it here. Okay, um, so bungee cord, whether you or not want to use it or not, true or false. You've got the bungee cord addresses, so what the uh, basically what addresses bungee cord will use. Um, you've got how many Netty threads there are. So if you're using Netty um, as the port listeners and stuff, um, this will show you how many uh, threads it will use. Um, obviously, it's going if it's going to use more threads, it may uh, use up more CPU. Uh, timeout time. So this is how long in seconds the server should go unresponsive before attempting to start up again or restart. But it might not work in all cases. Uh, restart and crash. So if the server crashes, you can restart again just like that. It doesn't always work. Uh, if it is going to restart, it wants to restart script. So start.sh. Uh, change that to wherever you are. So I'll just change it to my, I think I'll just still call it start. And then cmd. Uh, prevent proxies. So this basically, if someone's logging in, it will check their IP with a database, and if it's registered as a proxy, then it will um, basically kick them and stop them from connecting. So if you don't want lots of spam bots uh, joining with using proxies, then you can prevent it here. Uh, messages. So these are just the standard messages. You know, if you have a whitelist um, and it says you're not whitelisted, it will come up. That will what it will say to the player, unknown command when they type a, a dodgy command in which they don't know, or server full if your um, server is at maximum capacity and someone tries to join, this is the message they'll see. Listeners, again, this is uh, basically for the bungee cord, uh, the port, which is default host things, you'll be able to manually change them here, so that's true or false. And then you've also got um, the netty, whether or not you want to use the uh, Netty networking engine because so that's a true or false um, basically it will help with the uh, bungee cord listening in uh, whack. and then you've got the world settings so these are per world so you can actually change this per world but the default is sort of the default for every single world so I'll just go over that and then you can change it per world okay so Verbose, basically, when we started it up, it showed a little information about the world and whatnot. You can set that to false and it'll stop that information from showing. The view distance, so this is how many chunks that will be loaded around every player. Um, you can set this between 15 and 1. Uh, the merge radius, so EXP will merge together when it's in uh, this radius, so a radius of three blocks. Then it will merge together and same goes for items, if items are the same it will merge together as well. Chunks per tick, so this is how many chunks will be updated per tick, so 650. Uh, if you lower it then it might be make a growth slower basically in the chunks, so wheat and stuff might not grow as fast and basically updating won't be as fast, but it could save resources. Uh, but if you obviously make it higher it may cause growth to be faster obviously it's going to be uh, laggier for the players and whatnot. Or it could be laggy, I should say. Uh, Anti-X-Ray, there's actually anti-X-Ray built into this uh, spigot. So you can enable it here, true or false. And then you've got the engine mode 1 or 2. Uh, engine mode 1 basically changes all the ores to uh, stone. Um, unless they've got an air block next to it. So that's one way of doing it. And the engine mode 2 will basically create a layer of lots and lots of different ores and stuff. So the, the uh, x rays can't actually see um, through this like massive amount of uh, ores to actually where the real ones are. So basically, it will spoof it, I guess. And then you've got the uh, ore IDs here. So if you want to add more or less, 
you can. Uh, and then you've got ticks per, so hopper check. So if this is when the hopper has to check to do something. So how often it updates, and then hopper transfer, how often in ticks uh, the hoppers will transfer things. Random light updates, so sometimes there's lighting issues with um, the well, particularly under uh, mountains and stuff. Basically, it will randomly fix these. You can set up the true or false where you don't want this to happen. Uh, mob spawn range, so that's just the range in blocks that mobs can't spawn or can spawn. Uh, growth, these are just the modifiers for the, all the uh, different things that grow. If you want it to be faster, you can increase this number. If you want it to be slow, you can decrease this number. At the moment, they're all 100, so that's 100% all the same. Uh, entity activation range. So basically, when uh, animals or monsters are 32 blocks away from a player, they'll be put in this sort of um, less tick mode, so they use less resources. Uh, when they're obviously activated near a player, then you may want them to use and stuff. Uh, like use higher tick rates so this is just this is again to save uh, resources and stuff um, you can increase this number to save even more or decrease this number to save more resources uh, and whatnot uh, and then again with entity tracking range basically you won't see players unless they are within 48 blocks away you won't see animals unless they are within 48 blocks away and the same goes for monsters smith and another uh, this will also save some resources, obviously, because you don't have to um, send all the ticks for each what the player is doing. And it will save on the client side because they won't have to ray out, render a lot of uh, different players and monsters and whatnot. Uh, it should also help if you have sort of wall hackers and stuff on your server, if you have like a PvP server um, that sits here. Like, um, obviously, you won't be able to see as far the players in the distance, so that would be useful. And that is all for the config. So overall, this basically is a, a server based on Craft Bucket. You can still use your plugins from Craft Bucket. It's just a lot faster and it should be uh, better performance. Uh, as I said, feel free to try it out. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing it will work for everyone. Um, obviously, there might be some issues of it. Craft Bucket is generally seen as more stable. But I've used it and it, it seems perfectly fine uh, all the times I have. So thank you for watching. This has been me, Sam here from Gaming, signing out. That's slowly getting out of the sand. Yay. Oh, damn it. So you have one life each. <laughs>